Well, congratulations. Hi. Oh, we got to try that again. Congratulations. Thank you. You guys are very welcome. I am uh, extremely proud of all of you guys and excited to be here on uh, this morning because this is a huge accomplishment to be able to come this far uh, to commit over months, almost a year of your life and your time in order to make sure that you develop. One of the things I tried to remind you guys every morning that we were together is that while you were here, there were other young people who were sleeping in their beds, other young people who were playing their Xbox, their PlayStation, other young people who were on their phone uh, doing mindless things while you guys were here developing your life, getting ready for the next dimension. And so you guys have reached a place whereby Toyota, one of the top co uh, companies in the world, in the world, has brought you into its belly, allowed for you to get training that people pay thousands of dollars in order to get, people die in order to get, and you guys now have that training and will be able to go on to high and lofty places. And so to you guys, I commend you to the entire staff uh, that is here that is dedicated as mentors. I commend you, and certainly to my brother from another mother, Wilson Johnson, man, you know, let's give him a hand. for uh, uh, far too long, you know, I was seeing them ask him about some business, he's like, man, I'm still in Hawaii, you know, and so I said, man, are you ever coming back, you know, are you ever coming back? It was hard. Uh, um, but that is what happens when you work hard, you can play hard, and that's the, the real fruit of life, is when you work hard, you play hard. Uh, for those of you guys who I haven't met before, it's good to meet you, um, for parents and, and other mentors that are here. Uh, I want to share, how long do I have? Maybe like 15, 20 minutes? Or? Okay, I want to share you guys from my heart. I'm rushing from event to event today, uh, but I want to share with you guys from my heart of how much I appreciate where you are. Many of you guys have heard my story from being born and raised in South Central Los Angeles, born to a single mother, father addicted to crack cocaine, stabbed twice when I was 8 years old, got locked up at 17 years old, facing 10 years in prison. Uh, dropping out of school, all of those different things, being able to get back in school, having a social worker, my last name is my adopted last name, but having a social worker who adopted me, took me into his house, got me back in school, got me to Morehouse College, four years there, went to go live in Egypt, came back, enrolled at UCLA, got my master's in social work and public policy, and today, being one of the youngest CEOs in Los Angeles, commanding about $4 million of business in my company every single year. I've been blessed in order to be where I am, but I didn't get there overnight, and it wasn't an easy path. And it's funny, because when people see you successful, when they see you doing well, they kind of assume that everything came easy to you. But the reality is in life, that people who are successful often went through a whole lot of hurdles in order to get there. And it is the adversities that really give us the advantage. It's because of the mess that I went through that I have a message today. Because of the test, I have a testimony, and that's the reality of life. I have listened to you guys' stories. I have watched you even battle throughout these last couple of months. Some of you guys have contacted me on my phone, via my email. Times when you have been crying. Times when you felt like giving up. Times when you didn't know if you were going to make it through this last year of school. Some of you guys even call in and say, you know what? I'm at that point. I don't know what to do right now. And I have watched you guys press through all of those adversities in order to make sure you have an advantage in your life. I want to share with you four animals. Uh, I was a single child, so I talked to things all the time. Uh, and one of the things I used to talk to was animals. So I'm going to tell you about some conversations I had with some animals and what they wanted me to share with you today. All right? Uh, so the first animal I met was an animal called a baboon. Anybody know what a baboon is? Yes. What's a baboon? Yeah. It's a monkey, right? It's a monkey. And it's a very unique monkey because baboons have very intellectual skills. They can go places that other people can't go. They can go to high positions that other monkeys can't reach. They have the ability to think similar to us in how they take care of one another and handle their business. And so for a baboon, one time I'm at the LA Zoo. I walk by the baboon cage. The baboon looks at me and is like, yo, Charles. I'm like, yo, you ain't supposed to be talking, man. You're supposed to be swinging. The baboon's like, yo, I got something to tell you that I want you to share when you go out to Toyota. I said, man, what you got to say? The baboon looks at me and says, do you know how I got caught and put into this uh, zoo? I said, no, man, how did you get caught? The baboon said, man, I'm the baddest creature that's walking around, man. I can swing and get away from anybody that's going around. He said, but when they try to catch baboons, what they do is they dig a hole in the ground. They put a coconut in the ground. 
now and they make sure the coconut is stuck. He said the baboon catcher knows that I love coconuts. So what the baboon catcher does is he waits and hides behind a tree. He waits for me to hop down out of the tree, go and try to grab the coconut. He said, when I hopped out of the tree, I was trying to get that coconut. And he said, I saw the baboon catcher coming towards me, but I wanted that coconut so bad, I refused to let go. And he said, because I refused to let go, he threw his net over me, captured me, and now I've been in the zoo ever since. I said, man, what's the moral of the story? He said, the moral of the story is when you go back to Toyota, I want you to let them know that sometimes we get caught up because we refuse to let go. I want y'all to hear the point here. The point here is that many of us have different people, different things in our lives that we're holding on to so tight that we're not open to receive anything new. The reality of life is that whenever you are holding on to something, you have something in your hands, you are not open to receive anything new because you're holding on so tight to the old things of your life. I want y'all to feel this and to know this, is that as you get ready for the next station of your life, as you guys are getting ready to move to that new dimension, it's going to cause you to have to let go of some people and some things. Just a slang like that, y'all. He said, I don't believe what happened to me. 
I said, man, what happened to you? He said, man, when I'm running at full speed, I can leap nine feet forward without touching the ground. He said, I'm so strong that I can hop literally 10 feet in the air. Like he can dunk a ball, okay? Straight up in the air. He said, I can make it over anything. I said, so hey, man, how did you get caught? How was somebody able to catch you? He said, man, my only issue is that if there's something in front of me and I can't see where I'm going to land, he said, then I don't go. He said, so I was running, but there was a wall in front of me. I said, how tall was the wall? He said, the wall was only about six or seven feet. I said, man, why did you hop over the wall? He said, I didn't hop over the wall because as Impalas, we have been designed to only leap where we can see. <laughs> I said, man, that's a cold kind of, uh, kind of work. He said, man, because I couldn't see the other side, I never leaped over. So I stopped at the wall and I got caught. I said, oh man, I said, Antimo, man, you know, Mr. Impala, what's the moral of the story? He said, I want you to tell those young people at Toyota, he said, I want you to let them know you got to be a visionary. That even when you can't see how you're going to get where you want to go, you still have to have the courage, you still have to take the risk of leaping anyway. In this life, you're not always going to see how things are going to turn out. You're not always going to be able to see the other side. Why are you sitting here? Some of you guys in your mind is, how am I going to break out of the, the cycle of my family? How am I going to break my own mentality? How will I break into being the CEO? How will I break into running my own business? How will I become this therapist, this teacher, this doctor, this lawyer, this engineer? How will it happen? You can't see it yet. The Apollo wants me to tell you, you got to leap anyway. Go to college anyway. Hey, even when you don't see how the money's going to come in. Go there anyway. Speak up and ask anyway. One of the things we challenge you guys to do in these interviews, 